this week. Here comes the question. From Muslim guy from Toronto. Baba Ali, I really need your advice. There's this girl that I like and she likes me too. So I am caught up in love. <laughs> We've been seeing each other, talking on the phone, trying to keep our intention clean. I would like to marry her when I get older, but right now I want to keep the relationship so I can get to know her better. I just really like this girl and have been keeping a secret from my parents. Is it okay for me to have a girlfriend in a halal way so I can commit? Commit what? <laughs> Where do we get these questions from? If you're looking all confused, ask Baba Ali. And you don't know what to do, ask Baba Ali. If you want advice from a friendly funny guy, ask Baba Ali. Okay, first of all, guys and girls can't be friends. When a girlfriend and boyfriend are chilling, talking on the phone, talking about nonsense, they're not alone. We're not alone? Nuh-uh. <laughs> Actually, Shaitan is your third party. You see, he tapped into your phone long before the FBI. But unlike the government, he doesn't just listen, he whispers. Having plenty of experience dealing with human beings, he knows how guys and girls think. And you take the combination of a guy's sexual desires and mix it with a woman's desire for her attention, with no marhams in sight, you're only going down one direction, baby. Haram, haram, haram. Do you know what I'm saying? But what if we're just friends? <laughs> yeah, right. Let me break it down for you. But before I do, let me warn you, the truth is bitter. So if you can't handle the heat, I suggest you get out of the kitchen. For most girls, in the first 10 seconds, their decision is clear. Either there is chemistry and you can be a possible partner for them, or it's like, ew, I would rather fast before I marry you. It's nothing to take personal because people don't choose who they're attracted to. It's either there or it's not there. So if you fall into the you're like my brother category, then you're pretty much stuck there. Unfortunately, many guys just don't get this. So they become the friend. But in reality, they stick around hoping that one day you'll become more than just friends. On the other hand, most girls assume the guy friend is safe. Because they figure if I'm not attracted to him, how can he be attracted to me? <laughs> Joke! You see, he's not going to tell you the truth because he doesn't want to scare you off. Plus, he doesn't want to get blacklisted on the girls' network where everyone will think he's creepy. So he hangs around until the one day he runs out of patience and then he surprises you. Surprise! That's the day that you get the awkward phone call that your friend tells you that they love you. And you brought all this drama upon yourself. Unnecessary drama. And now you learn the hard way that there's consequences when you put guys and girls as friends. Now you're sitting there in denial with your arms crossed and say, Look, this can't be possible. This can't be possible. Yes, it's possible. I'm just telling you how it is, but you probably still don't believe me. You see, if a girl makes it clear to a guy that she has no attraction to him whatsoever, I'm talking about zero, zip, zilch, nada, never, ever, in a million years, you're like my brother never, then she can pretty much kiss her friend goodbye. Well, not literally, but you know what I mean. He's gone. <laughs> he's gone. Because once he finds out that he has no shot at her, he's going to become the next girl's friend. Now let's move on to the boyfriend-girlfriend relationship where there's a mutual attraction. It seems that a lot of people believe that it's okay to have a haram relationship as long as your intention is pure. Keyword, haram relationship. In other words, they think the ends justify the means. That concept isn't Islamic whatsoever. You don't do something haram with the hope of pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Since He created us, He knows our temptations, He knows our instincts, He knows our needs. So it only makes sense for the creation to follow the guidelines of their creator. He's given us paths, so it's up to you to make the right decision. You see, some paths are easier than others, but they come with consequences. And if you think the haram relationships will eventually bring you to tranquility, remember, 50% of these relationships end up in divorce. And these people are the ones who loved each other enough to get married. And remember, there's so many couples who don't get divorced, but they stay married and miserable. It's either because of their kids, or because they want to save money on taxes, or for whatever reason. The point is, they're not happy. Which explains why there's so much cheating in these relationships. But then you ask, what if the person I'm dating is a good Muslim that fears God? Then my answer is, if he's such a God-fearing Muslim, then why is his actions speaking otherwise? Think about it, if this person doesn't fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and has all these relationships before he gets married, then why do you expect him to suddenly change after he gets married? My point is, don't base your future on assumptions. Some people justify their haram relationships saying that, okay, we're going to do this until the one day we get married. My question to them is, who guaranteed you that one day? I mean, no one even guaranteed you that you'll be alive tomorrow. What if tomorrow never comes? Then today you die doing something haram. 
So many of your friends may not tell you what I'm telling you today. Maybe because they're doing the same thing, or maybe because they don't want to lose their friendship with you. But I don't know you and I'm not in your circle of friends. So I can tell you exactly how things are. I don't have to sugarcoat things because I'm not worried about losing my friendship with you. I want to tell you exactly how the reality is. And sometimes it's bitter, sometimes it's sweet. But at the end, it's the truth. Anyways, if you're ready for a relationship, a halal relationship, then somehow, some way, you have to bring it up to your parents. And since many parents have forgotten how it is to be young, to have the pressure of society, the temptations, the desires, it's going to be very difficult talking to your parents because some of them live in a bubble. But you have to at least try to talk to them. At first, they may just freak out because they'll be in shock. But inshallah, once your words digest, maybe something might trigger in their minds and maybe they may end up helping you. You see, you know your parents better than I do, so you have to prepare your words so you can present it to them correctly. But make sure you make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give you strength and patience. Now the reality is, following the straight path is extremely hard. But then again, the price of Jannah isn't cheap. Although the Haram path is easy and tempting, it's only temporary. This whole life is only temporary. And nothing more than a trial. But the hereafter is forever. Remember that. As like all my videos, I'm speaking to myself before I'm speaking to anyone else. This is Ali, and that's my advice. If you want advice from a friendly, funny guy, ask Baba Ali.